welcome back uh, this is the most important video which i want to share with you here i'm going to talk about the different types of returns and uh, like you know if you have a paper and pen my suggestion is please take a paper and pen start noting it down or you can use a print screen and then you can take a screenshot of all the important things there are different types of rate of returns which i want to cover in this one the first one is called as nominal rate of return and effective rate of return for example Let's say I go and invest my money in, let's say, post office senior citizen scheme. And what happens is that is they are going to give me interest at the rate of, let's say, 8.4% every quarter. Every quarter I'm talking about, let's say, 31st of March, 30th of June, and let's talk about like you know, 30th of September and 31st of December. So they gave me four, four interest, uh, like you know, the interest payment is given quarterly on four times. So my nominal rate of return is 8.4%, whereas my effective rate of returns will be higher than this percentage because the money which I've got on 31st of March, I will be able to redeploy it and then I will be able to do it. So, the, that is the difference between your nominal rate and effective rate, correct? The next thing is, we saw in the previous video, we talked about like you know, two real estate examples where somebody claimed like you know, their interest was uh, in the absolute return per annum was 20 percent uh, like you know, and 10 percent. In the case of plot, we talked about 20 percent. In the case of an apartment, like you know, he said about 10 percent. That is called absolute returns. But when you looked at the CAGR returns in the previous example, you saw 8.6 percent and then you saw 9.6 percent. This is what you saw, correct? And in our previous one, we also talked about uh, the real rate of return. This is the most important thing that you should be looking at, right? When I say the real rate of return, you get a return of investment, let's say like, you know, one plus, let's say uh, you make 10%, let's say you make 10% of it, you get it uh, like, you know, as the return on investment. But unfortunately, let's say the inflation is 5%, right? So what happens is even though 10% is the real rate of return, Correct. You may think the return on investment, the real rate of return is once you adjust it for that inflation of 5%, correct? That's how is your real rate of return is computed, which I'm going to cover in this. The next one I'm going to talk about is obviously like you know, only the first 7 lakhs or the first 5 lakhs is uh, like you know, you're not going to pay any tax. Beyond that, you'll be paying taxes. So what is important is your tax adjusted return. So it's very, very important that if you are in the tax lab of let's say 30%, if you are going to get 100 rupees, as discussed earlier, you will be getting actually 70 rupees, not 100 rupees. And the next one is real tax adjusted rate of return. That means it's not only inflation, you also take into account the taxes. So among all the things, your point number three is very, very important because you have a lot of investment avenues. When I say investment avenues, I am saying that you can invest in physical assets. When I say physical assets, you can invest in uh, like, you know, let's say real estate, you can invest in gold, you can invest in commodities, you can invest in a car, you can invest in an antique, you can invest in an art. These are physical assets. Similarly, you can also invest in financial assets. When you say financial assets, you can like, you know, lend the money. This all these things we covered in the wealth mantra, like you know, the very first session we covered. You can lend the money to somebody else or you can put the money in fixed deposits or like you know, you can invest the money in businesses, startups or you can even start your own firm. Like you know, these are all financial assets, correct? So if you are going to do all these things, it's very important that you take into account what is inflation, what is tax, like you know, net of taxes, how much you are getting it. The last one is that is, for example, if you are going to buy an apartment, let's say we saw that, like you know, let's assume that like you, know, you buy an apartment, you leave it for rent. Every month, let's say you are going to get, let's say 10,000 rupees as rent and all that stuff. What happens is, you should also look at internal rate of return. What is internal rate of return? The present value of all the inflows is equal to the present value of all the outflows at a particular rate of interest. So this will give you what is the uh, internal rate of return. I'm going to give you some examples and all that stuff. Wait for another 10-15 minutes, you should be able to get everything uh, clear. The next one is called as extended uh, uh, extended internal rate of return. This is an Excel sheet formula. Like, you know, for example, it's not necessary that you should be getting the money only on the first of the month. You may get the money on 10th of the month or the 5th of the month. So we're going to cover all these things in this uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes session. The first thing which I want to talk to you is about the effective rate of interest, right? I talked about nominal and effective. I gave you an example of senior citizen scheme. I said like, you know, you will get money on, uh, on March, you will get the money in uh, June, you will get the money in uh, like you know, September as well as in December, correct? So in a yearly interest, you will be making something called 8%, like you know, you invest uh, 1000 rupees and at the end of the year, they give you 80. So you, you made 
eight percent. But let's assume that it is half yearly. Half yearly means you will get two times. That means in the month of June as well as in the month of uh, December, what will happen is that is it is not eighty. It is forty one point. This one you will get forty, and this one is forty one point six. Why I am getting forty one point six here? We are assuming that you are reinvested this forty once again at the same rate of interest. So here it is not eight percent. It is eight point one six percent. On the other hand, let's assume that you would do it on a quarterly basis. We talked about senior citizen savings scheme where whereas it's not 8%, it is 8.24%. So what happens is your effective rate of interest like you know is 8.24 as compared to a nominal rate of interest of 8%. Similarly, monthly in a monthly you also make a little bit more. It is very easy to do all these things. What happens is go to an uh, Excel sheet or like you know go to a Google sheet and use the uh, use the function called effect or nominal. So I'm going to give you an example on the last slide like you know all these things I'll just show it to you again. It is easy to compute. So you should differ you should differentiate what is the effective rate and what is the uh, nominal rate. Okay. So that's what. Then the next one is something called absolute return and CAGR return. This is the third time we are going to learn about all these things. So this we are talking about annualized returns. And whereas absolute return can be much, much higher, but you should be always looking at your compounded annual growth rate. That's very, very important. How do you compute your uh, well, like, you know, absolute return? Very, very close, simple. Take the final value, reduce the initial value, divided by the initial value, multiply by 100. So for example, I invest 1000 rupees and I get 1500. So I'm getting 1500 minus 1000 divided by 1000 into 100. This is the same example which we saw in the previous video where like you know, somebody sold uh, like you know, an 100 lakh flat for 150 lakhs. So I'm just reiterating the same thing so that the, all the concepts are uh, like you know, understood by you very, very clearly. So you will be thinking like you know the annualized return is something like you know simple annualized return is 22.47 but when you use a CAGR it will automatically come down correct and we also talked about um, like you know we also talked about uh, the other one on a plot like you know we where we made uh, 9 percent and all that stuff we are using another example here if you look at it somebody says like you know they made 400 percent but actually if you look at the annual compounded growth rate it's only 8 percent my suggestion is use the calculator and then like you know achieve this uh, 8 percent the next thing that we learnt about is something called tax adjusted returns so fixed deposits and all that stuff is going to be taxed at normal slab rate same thing with the debt mutual funds also so if you're going to invest let's say in one lakh like you know, you're going to invest one lakh of rupees and like you know let's say you're going to invest at 10 10 percent so you'll be getting something like 10000 rupees assuming that you are in the 30 percent tax rate you will get 10000 multiplied by 1 minus 0.3. What is 0 0.3? 30% uh, is a tax. So it's nothing but 10,000 multiplied by 0 0.7. That means essentially you will be getting only 7,000 rupees or 7%. So your tax adjusted returns is 7,000 rupees and the tax adjusted rate is just 7%. Just 7%. So please go through all these things which is very, very important. So the formula is tax adjusted rate is equal to nominal rate of 10% multiplied by 1 minus tax rate. The next thing which I want to talk about is the real rate of return. For example, I get 10% of interest as I said in the previous example, but the inflation is let's say 5%. The inflation is 5%. So the numerator will be 1.1. The denominator will be 1.5. So the real rate of return is not the minus, it's not 10 minus 5, 5%, 5 it will be something like 4.8 or 4, something like that. So I'll be talking about here. Let's assume that I'm able to make 12% from equity market. Let us assume that I'm making 7% 7, 7 is the inflation, like you know, 7% is the inflation. So you will be thinking that like, you know, I made 5% as the real rate of return. After adjusting for inflation and all, your, your real rate of return is 4.67. Your real rate of return is 4. If you're going to put a fixed deposits and all that stuff, you will not be even able to make this kind of returns actually. Okay. Now we talked about internal rate of return. So for this, for internal rate of return, you, you have to use only something called an Excel sheet. Go to the Excel sheet, use the formula called IRR or it can be in a Google sheet. What happens is, let's assume that you're making annual payments. If you're going to make annual payments, you say minus 100. Let's assume that minus 100. And then you go, let's assume that in the second year you get 10, third year you get 10, the third year you get uh, let's say another 10 and the fourth year you're able to sell it for let's say 125. Then what will happen is you just put IRR and the, put the four values. It assumes that you've done on an annual basis. By doing an annual basis, you will get the IRR very, very easily in an Excel sheet. Okay. 
So, here is an example. Let us assume that you invested 50,000 and like you know, you are able to make 30 percent return like you know for the next 5 years and all that stuff. But like you know, you have also done a money back policy. Let us assume that money back policy where even capital is also repaid. Now, what will happen is that is you would have got something like 15,000 into 5 times you would have got 75,000. 75,000 you would have got. You would have been thinking that I got 50 percent, 50 percent and all. Actually, your IRR percentage is only, your IRR percentage is only 15.24 and not 50 percentage, correct? So, we are talking about all these things and another example like you know and uh, we are also cross checking whatever we said like you know, we are just trying to do a cross checking. Our suggestion is that is use an excel sheet and then learn all this kind of basics, right. And uh, uh, same thing over here like you know here, here you will see the annualized return rate of return is only 5.74 percent annual is rate of return is 5.474 percent and here like you know, some people will invest in let us say assume that uh, they are buying an insurance policy and all that stuff sometimes the IRR works out only to 6 percent but please understand like you know the interest rates are drop dropping yeah, like you know, every 5 years or 10 years maybe in 2031 our interest rate will be let us say 3 percent or 4 percent or in 2041 we would have become a developed economy and then our interest rates could be like you know as low as 4 percent or 3 percent. If that is going to be there at that point in time if you are able to generate an IRR of 6 percent which is really much much better correct. And the other one which I want to talk to you is about something called XIRR, it is called extended internal rate of return where the now, the dates keeps differing, the dates keeps differing. So, if you are going to plug in the dates, it is called external internal extended internal rate of return, correct. So, the summary of the session is that is like you know this is what you learnt all about it and this is very, very, very important in your business life, it is very important in your personal life and it is also very important in your like you know investing life, like you know you are going to invest, make investments across various types of assets, it is very important that, that you understand all these types of uh, returns. And um, the Google Sheet, I mean today like you know everybody is having a mobile phone, everybody is having a Gmail ID. In case if you have a Google Sheet, like you know you just go and plug in all this number, open a Google Sheet and I just put all this one. For example, uh, for IRR like you know I just gave one example, like you know, if you look at the cell number C and then cell number 3, cell number C and 3, I plugged in a function called IRR is equal to C1 and C2. So, I invest 100 rupees, I get back 120 rupees. So, what is the internal rate of return? It is being exactly 1 year, so I get 20 percent. Whereas, in the other one I talked about extended internal rate of return. What happens is that is I give 100 rupees, but only thing is after 6 months, we talked about like you know nominal rate and effective rate and all this stuff in that example, right. I get 10 rupees at the end of 6 months. At the end of 12 months, I am getting both the 10 rupees and the entire capital. So, here you will see my interest rate extended uh, uh, internal rate of return is 21.04 percent and the and the formula which I am using is F and 4, F and 4, column F and 4. If you see column and F and 4, I am using this particular formula equal to XIRR F1 colon F3, E1 colon E3, then you will get this particular one. Then we learnt about nominal and effect. It is very simple like you know I am going about I uh, the, the, the kind of things that I am using is a cell number I1 and then I am using cell number I2. In I1, I am saying that I am getting 10 percent, I am getting 10 percent, but only thing is I am getting that interest rate like you know something like uh, uh, every quarter. So, for every quarter, being a quarter I am using the number 4, so what happens is I am getting 10.38 percent. On the other hand like you know for example, I am getting 10.38 percent, but like you know I am getting like you know what I mean at 4 quarters, what is the nominal? So, I am using the function called nominal, it is basically I am just reversing it. My suggestion is that is you learn all these things by practice. So, whatever I have shown to you like you know download those two uh, mobile apps and use your Google sheet and like you know when you do all these things I am sure you will be able to do it. Uh, wishing you a very very happy investing journey and uh, these things will have a very huge positive impact on your investing life and like you know achieving your financial freedom at a very early age. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, thank IIT Madras for providing this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you.